Hey guys, welcome to another Python tutorial for beginners. So in our next two videos, we'll implement a simple unit conversion program that will allow us to convert a value from one unit to another. So the today's video includes the first half of the unit conversion, and we'll be talking about the strategies of implementing the unit conversion, as well as what type of implementations are considered as bad or good. So let's get into this. So before you get into the actual implementation, let's think about a few things that we want to achieve in this implementation. So the first thing is to get the user input. Uh, we want to first create a menu so that the users can either quit the program or go into the unit conversion. Then once they select the unit conversion, we want to prompt the user with uh, three things, number, from unit, and an end unit. And once we get some data from end users, we want to use those data to convert the units from one unit to another. So let's first start with creating a function to get the user input. So we've done this many times, so we should be familiar with this by now. So I'm going to create a function here, def get user input uh, colon. And then uh, at the top, I'm going to create a print statement to display the menu to the end users. And then the menu will include the unit conversion and quit. So I can do print uh, menu. And then the first one is the unit conversion, so that they can actually go into the unit conversion. And then the second option is quit. And in below there, I'm going to create a variable called menu to actually get the menu value from the end users. So I can do menu and then int because we are taking the integer value, input, and then I'm going to say a prompt message here, choose an option from the menu, colon and space. And in below, I'm creating a condition. If menu is one, then I want to ask three values, which is a number as a float from unit and to unit. So I can do if menu equal equal one, then I want to first get the number as a float and then type input and enter the prompt message here, enter a number colon space. Below, let's get the from unit, input, enter the from unit colon space and same thing for the to unit, input, enter the to unit colon and space. And at the end, I want to return the menu number from unit and to unit as a dictionary. So I can do return dictionary and then set the key as a menu and pass the value of menu here. And then same thing for the number and pass the number and from unit and pass the from unit here as well. And then lastly, we need to do a to unit here. So to unit and then pass the value for the two unit. And if the menu selected is two, meaning if they want to quit, I want to return the menu to the actual unit conversion function. So I can do L if menu is two, then I want to do return. And I only want to return the menu this time because we don't have the three values. Okay, so now we have our user input function here. Let's create our actual unit conversion function. So in below, I can create a separate function that convert unit and then uh, within the function, I want to actually create a while loop, while true. And below here, I want to first get the user input, so I can set user input and then call the user input function like that. So within this function, I'm actually saying while true to actually keep this program running. So if I specify while true, this true means that this while loop will create an infinite loop, meaning whatever the code block that we have below this while loop will be keep running. And since we have the function that gets the user input, it will keep asking user input continuously unless we manually specify this while loop to stop the iteration. And now the first thing that I'm going to do here is to create a condition to exit out from this program meaning to stop this iteration if the user wants to quit the program. So I'm going to create an if statement here. So if user input dot get, and then we need to get the value of the menu. So get the menu, and then if that is equal to two, then we want to actually stop the iteration. So we just want to break here. And then we can create three variables below here for the cases when user selects one from the get user input function. So I can do number, equal to user input dot get and then specify the key as a number and in below I also want to get the from unit so user input dot get and then specify the from unit as a key and then the last one is a two unit so user input dot get and then get the two unit as a key and for the from unit and two unit I want to make this as an uppercase so that we can actually avoid the case sensitivity problem and as you notice here, I'm not using the else block here because when the break statement is run in this if block, all the rest of the code in this while loop will not be executed anyway. Okay, so now we have everything to get the user input within the convert unit function. Now let's think about the strategy of how we are going to actually convert the unit. And I want you guys to pause the video for a second and start thinking about how you do actually convert the unit from one unit to another. 
So there are many ways to do this, but let me actually show you two bad ways of doing this. And the reason why I'm showing the bad ways first is because I really want you guys to see what type of implementations are considered as bad or ineffective and understand the consequences of having those kind of implementations. Okay, so then now let's talk about the two bad strategies. So I'm going to call the first strategy as a 100% manual implementation. So let me implement only some pieces of it. So within the while loop that we have here, I'm going to create a condition for each of the unit one by one and what that unit can be converted to. So I'm going to create a first if statement here saying if from unit is equal to a centimeter, then I'm going to create a nest if statement if to unit is equal to a kilometer and then I'm going to put a pass for now and L if to unit is equal to a meter and then lastly we can put L if to unit is equal to a millimeter and then let's also put pass here uh, and so now in each of the nest if statements that we have I want to manually tell this program how to convert this centimeter to a kilometer meter and millimeter. So if we think about this centimeter as a one centimeter, we have to divide one centimeter by 100,000 to convert it to a kilometer. And for meter, I have to divide the one centimeter by 100. And for millimeter, I have to multiply the number by 10. So let me actually put that logic here uh, manually. So I can do a pin number divide by 100,000. And then same thing here, print number divide by 100 and then lastly we can do a print number times 10 so then now let's try to run this and see if this works so I can invoke this function convert unit and if I run it then you will see a menu and I'm gonna select one because I want to go into the unit conversion and enter a number so I can say 2.7 and enter the from unit and in here we have to make sure that we only put a centimeter because we only have a one if block for the centimeter only for now so I can say centimeter here and then I want to convert that to a millimeter and if I type enter here then you will see a 27.0 meaning the 2.7 centimeter was converted to 27.0 millimeter. So as you see in the screen this works but this is a bad implementation. Why? Because within this program we had to manually specify for all the cases when from unit is a centimeter and two unit is a kilometer, meter and millimeter. And because of that, this implementation requires a lot longer lines of code and also requires us to manually write each scenario calculation one by one manually for all the units that we want to convert. So let me show you what I mean by that exactly. So let me just copy and paste this first if block three more times because we are now dealing with four different units. So if I just paste it here and then one more time and lastly to here once again. And then what we have to do here is that from the second if, uh, if statement, we have to change this to L if, and then L if, and then the last one as well. And then for the from unit, we have to also convert this because the, the centimeter is taken from the first slot here. So I'm going to make this a meter, and then kilometer, as well as the millimeter. And we also have to change the two units so that the meter is actually not being converted to meter again. So we have to change this to centimeter and then we have to replace the kilometer to a centimeter now. And then we have to replace millimeter into the centimeter. And also we have to recalculate what the conversion logic should be for each of the units that we have to deal with, uh, which I'm not going to do right now because I'm just showing you a bad example. So this uh, if and else if block may look okay to you for now because it's only about 30 lines of code and we are only dealing with four different units. But if you think about writing a unit conversion program for 50 different units, then it really becomes a whole different story. And also the fact that you have to manually calculate the values for different units here for all different cases that you want to deal with, it really makes this implementation a bad approach. Because there is no point of us creating a program like this if we want to write every case manually one by one. Okay, so then now let's move on to the slightly better, but yet still another bad implementation. So the idea this time is pretty similar to what we just did, but this time we'll be using dictionary data type to map the values for each of the from units that we have in the if blocks. So instead of us creating the nested if blocks just like this, inside of the each outer uh, if block, uh, we will create a dictionary called mapper. 
and write equal values for all other three units that this kilometer can be converted to. So I can create a first mapper under this kilometer block. So let me create a map here and then dictionary and then set the meter as a key. And then one kilometer is equal to thousand meter. So I'm going to put thousand here and one kilometer is equal to a hundred thousand centimeter, hundred and thousand, one more zero. And then one kilometer is also equal to one million millimeter. So what this means is that one kilometer is equal to all the values in this mapper, as well as a uh, thousand meter is equal to a uh, hundred thousand centimeter and hundred thousand centimeter is also equal to one million milliliter. So basically in this mapper, we are putting the equal values for all four units that we are dealing with based on one kilometer. And once we have this mapper, let's write our equation here to calculate. So our equation for unit conversion should be that we will first multiply the number to the values within this mapper dictionary. So I can say uh, print number times and then I'm going to call the mapper and then pass the key for the two unit because we are removing all the nested if statements by using this uh, dictionary mapper here. So if the number is one and from unit is a kilometer, then it will come inside this if block and we will just multiply one by the value coming from this mapper dictionary. So if we want to actually convert the kilometer to meter, then the number is one. So one times mapper and two units is a meter. Then we are actually doing one times thousand. So one kilometer is actually equal to a thousand meter. And same thing, if the number is one and the two units is a centimeter, then this mapper uh, square bracket two unit will actually return 100,000 as the value. So it's going to be one times 100,000, meaning we are actually converting one kilometer to 100,000 centimeter. And we can also do this for all other units that we have. But to save some time, let me just copy and paste the rest of them here. So just copy it here and then put the right indentation. So now we have uh, all the units, kilometer, meter, centimeter, and millimeter. So let's try to run this and test it out. So I want to go into the unit conversion and enter number. So 2.45 and the from unit is a millimeter and then the two unit is a centimeter. And so then what we see here is that 2.45 millimeter is successfully converted to a 0 0.245 centimeter here. And let me try once again. So one again, enter a number. So 5.4 and then I want to put a meter and then I want to convert that to a kilometer. And you will see that 5.4 meter is converted to a 0.0045 kilometer. So everything is working as expected. So now, as I mentioned in the beginning of this section, this approach of using a dictionary to map the values is somewhat better than the last one. But this is still not so great because in here, we have to still calculate and create the mapper for all the units that this program will allow. So for kilometer, I have a separate mapper with the different values. And for meter, I also have a mapper with the different calculations. And this still requires lots of manual work to create the custom calculations for all the units that we're going to be using in this program. So before I end the first half of this video, let me give you a quick highlight of an idea that I was just thinking of. So when we look at the previous two implementations, we can clearly see that we need a way to eliminate us having to create this manual calculations, meaning manual mapper for each unit, right? So if we think about it, there is a simple way here. As you see in this implementation that we are mapping one kilometer to three different units which are meter, centimeter, and millimeter, then how about we just create a one standard mapper for all the units that we want to convert so that when there is a new unit that we want to convert, all we have to do is to just add a new unit and the converted value into that standard mapper and our program will handle the rest of it. And our standard mapper should look something like this. So let me just copy and paste down here. And then let me also apply some line breaks here as well so that we can see. So when we look at this, one meter is equal to 0 0.001 kilometer and is also equal to 100 centimeter and so on. And with this uh, standard unit mapper, we can do a simple cross multiplication to get the converted value as shown in the screen right now. And we can only do this kind of mathematic operations because all the values that we put into this standard unit mapper are equal regardless of its unit. Okay guys, that's it for this video. As I mentioned in the beginning of this video, I'm gonna go into that implementation for the next approach in our next video. But until the next video comes out, I want you guys to think about and maybe start your own implementation using the standard mapper idea that I've just explained so that we can better understand the implementations which will come in our next video. And if you found this video helpful, please don't forget to subscribe and like my videos. Thanks for watching and hope to see you in next videos.